So we see two key challenges in the migration from 100 gig to 400 gig. The first one is moving from, from the NRZ modulation to the PAM4 modulation. As we know, the PAM4 is more sensitive for noise. So the case of seeing errors during the transmission is a higher. And the second challenge we see is moving from this new transceiver interfaces. So where they're gonna go from QSFP28 to QSFPDD, OSFP technologies, for eight lane or four lanes. Additional challenges are with the um, 100 gig uh, per wavelength. This is uh, driving new laser technologies. The 100 gig was challenged in the beginning of ramping when it tried to introduce 100 gig CWDM4. We have to ensure that we are able to ramp and new lasers are required with higher bandwidths in order to achieve 100 gig DR, 400 gig per lambda. So the couple of uh, uh, PMDs that are critical in that particular technology are FR4 and DR4. DR4 also has the interesting uh, value proposition of allowing us to deliver multiple 100 gig per slots. So you actually increase by a factor of four the ability to actually broadcast or have a radix in the, in the high density switches. For example, one of the switch that's in the, the EA Boost today is a, a 32 ports 400 gig switch, giving us the ability to offer 128 ports of 100 gig in uh, small form factors. The second interesting uh, challenge that the industry has, coming a little bit later, is the move to 100 gig ZR. 100 gig ZR is going to transform the industry from a long reach perspective, and especially the DCI uh, technology. And so every port that we're offering today in our new 400 gig switches, OSFP, are what we call 400 gig ZR, because they're providing the power necessary for this type of technology. So today at the Eaton Alliance booth, we're demonstrating again 400 gig interoperabilities, where we are showing multiple test vendor, where we are generating 100 gig, 400 gig, and 200 gig signal, going to multiple test switches, including um, the Arista switch, to other test generators. And the goal here is to actually show the transmission rates going to different medias, what we're talking about OSFP, QSFPDD, QSFP28, DR1 technologies to DR4 technologies, so on and so forth. So what EA Boost does is critical for the uh, interoperability and the development of standards. It is critical that we are able to introduce technologies that work regardless of the switch vendor, regardless of the test equipment vendor, enabling the proliferation of the technology. What we're demonstrating here is three different switches in the EA booth. The first one is uh, from our 7050 series with 32 ports of 400 gig OSFP. We have two other switches which are from our deep buffer uh, high routing table uh, sw family switches, one having 24 port OSFP and another one having 32 port of QSFP 100 gig and four ports of OSFP. We are demonstrating various PMDs, whether it is uh, 400 gig SR8, broken into individual port, 100 gig, 100 gig DR connected to 400 gig DR4, point to point DR4 to each other, point to point FR4 to each other. There's a variety connecting to Expo uh, test equipment, connecting to Cisco switches. It's demonstrating the readiness of the technology to be adopted in high volume and uh, interoperating between vendors. So the next uh, generation we foresee is transitioning to 800 gig per slot. The good news about it is that it should be reusing the same optical technology. The 100 gig per lambda that we just talked about is going to be the same technology used on the optical side. However, the electrical side is going to transition to 100 uh, gigabit per lane, 30, PAM4, and which is an interesting and difficult transition for the industry. So we are working with connectors vendors, working with um, 
retimer vendors or chip vendors in order to deliver the right technology needed for 800 gig. Beyond 800 gig, people are starting to look at co-packaging. Co-packaging meaning that you're bringing the transceivers which are pluggable today inside the box and co-packaging it with the uh, silicon ASICs, the switching ASICs. I think this will take several years to come to fruition. We have probably at least one or two generation of systems that are going to be based on pluggable transceivers. But the, we have to start working on the technologies, the thermal technologies, the packaging technologies, and the integration technologies in silicon photonics so that we can deliver three or four years from now the technology for co-packaging. Similar answer to what Christoph mentioned, we're seeing the 112 gig PAM4 electrical moving forward. This means moving to technology or data rates, which will be 800 gig versus the 400 gig. Again, that would be new challenges. What type of interface that would be? Is it going to be a pluggable or not a pluggable? Again, the next, we'll see what that is. But we expect to be the same challenges that we saw when we went from 100 gig to 400 gig to also be there when we go from 400 gig to 800 gig. And what does that mean after? Are we going to go 1.6? So there are a lot of things that we will see in the next couple of years that will be challenging for the industry. At Expo, the design we have, which is flexible, which allows us for, to go from and support the actual generation and the next generation will have us ready for in the case that happened. But in the case that the customer needs to support 800 gig, we also have a solution for that.